Hello and welcome, my name is Melody from MelodyCrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how I make my fringe triangle shawl. It's a really fun thing to crochet. I came up with it when my son's girlfriend asked for a quick gift for her friend last, I think it was about four years ago when I put it on my blog. It's over on MelodyCrochet.com. You'll find the link to the pattern and the PDF there. But the good thing about it is it's made top down. That means it gets faster and faster because the rows get shorter and shorter, as opposed to those projects where the rows get longer and longer. How frustrating is that? Just saying. I'll show you at the end how to do the fringe, which I always keep crinkly because this is the center of the ball. Um, but if you like, you can always just get them damp and they straighten right up, but I never do that. It's just more fun, but it's kind of squishy. You can wear it over your shoulders. You can drape it around your neck to keep warm under your coat. It's just a really fun, easy, versatile piece and it'll take you no time at all to make. But if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. When you do, I'll get a notification and I will get right back to you. Thanks for stopping by and let's get to the materials list. For this project, you are going to need one ball of size 4 worsted weight yarn. I'm using Lion Brand Yarns Heartland. I like the tonal quality and it has a really nice drape, but feel free to use whatever you like to in this project. Also, you're going to need a size N or 10 millimeter crochet hook, a nice big hook, it works up so quickly. And you'll need a scissor and a yarn needle to work in the ends after your project's finished. If you feel more comfy, feel free to mark your last stitch of each row with a locking stitch marker, but you won't see me doing that in this video because it's actually really obvious on this project. I think you're going to be just fine with that one, but you always have the option. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with a slip knot. There we go. Pop your hook in there and chain loosely for 124. Now, if you have a hard time chaining loosely, just go up a hook size for your chain. There's no harm in that. That way you know you aren't going to be struggling to crochet into a tight chain. That you're not going to have that pucker at the end of your project. But I am okay just kind of loosely chaining. Just make sure you aren't pulling too much. There we go. So we're aiming for 124. Here we have arrived at 50. I like to put a locking stitch marker in at, at the 50th chain just so I can remember. In case I lose count, I don't have to go back all the way. It's a little less frustrating. Gotta work with yourself if you know yourself, and I know me, I lose count. <laughs> okay, let's continue on toward our journey. Here we are, 124 chains later. We're counting back three and single crocheting under two legs of your chain. Um, getting under two legs like this will keep you from getting a gap. Sometimes when you use a large hook, on a yarn that's designed for a smaller hook, you get a gap in your chain. You don't want to do that. So get under two legs, chain one, skip a chain, and double crochet in the next chain. So the first one was single crochet, and now you are in double crochets. Chain one, double crochet after you skip a chain there, all the way across. And that's your pattern. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. And here we are at the end of our first row. I have four, maybe three chain spaces left. I'm going to skip those and single crochet right into the last one. There we are. Now chain three. And turn your work. Here's row two. Skip the first chain space and single crochet in the second chain space of your row. That's your first decrease. Chain one and double crochet into the next stitch right into the chain space. Chain one, double crochet into the next chain space. And we're just going to do that all the way across. We're going to stop when we have two chain spaces left. Making that nice mesh fabric. Here we are with the two spaces left. Chain one, skip a space and single crochet into the last chain space. Chain three and turn. Chip, I'm sorry, skip a chain space. <laughs> and then single crochet into the second chain space of the row. Chain one and double crochet into each 
space across. Don't forget the chain one in between, otherwise it's going to get really small really fast. And that is the pattern. Chain one, double crochet across. And it works up really fast. You just do this for the row. You're going to be skipping the second to the last and the very first chain space of each row. So it's going to decrease really quickly into a triangle because that's kind of like skipping two stitches at the beginning and the end of every row. Then you're going to form this nice mesh fabric and continue working yourself across. And I'll show you what it looks like at the end of this row when you have two chain spaces left. Here that is. One, two, chain one and single crochet in the very last chain space. Chain one, two, and three. Turn your work. Then you'll skip your first chain space, single crochet in the second, chain one. Then you'll double crochet, chain one, all the way across until you have two chain spaces left. You'll skip the second to the last chain space and single crochet into the first. And that is your repeat for the entire shawl until you have a row left that only has two chain spaces. I'll show you just a few more. Just double crochet and chain one. There we go. And I will meet you back in a minute after you get to your row that only has two chain spaces left. And here we are. That's how much yarn I have left. And I'm down to two chain spaces on the bottom of my fringe triangle. They're kind of flattened out, but they're right there by my left thumb. There we are. So go ahead and chain three. One, two, and three. Turn your work. Skip that first chain space. And then slip stitch and fasten off into the last chain space. There we go. Find your scissors, snip your yarn, fully fasten off, maybe a little securing knot. There's going to be fringe here, so don't worry about hiding this. And now we are going to show you how we make the fringe. Okay, so I take a book and I wrap the rest of the yarn around this book. This is just a moleskin. I think it's five and a half by nine inches. Um, a DVD cover works, whatever you have around that's around this size. And I just wrap and wrap and wrap. I think I got about 250 resolutions. Then you take some seriously sharp scissors and you cut just a few strands across. Just snip, little snips. I keep my hand on top to give it some counter pressure so it doesn't become too much of a mess. <laughs> and this is what I'm left with. I have all these strands. I have a bit of an idea of how many strands are here because I counted loosely, but you're going to be adding fringe to the angles, not to the straight on the top, so not to your foundation chain. You're going to be adding the fringe on the side. And I like to add it about every two inches. Now that's not gonna end up perfect. You're going to be adding it in different portions of your row all the way across. So I start with it top. This is eight strands because I did the math and I found out that I would need that this should be perfect. I might have a couple extra <laughs> but with how many times I wrapped it you might only have four or five strands that looks fine too. That little strand on the right that's just my tail. Now the first one's always fidgety. I find a metal hook actually works a little bit better for this but you use what you have right? So the rule is, don't change sides. Um, it doesn't matter too much whether you enter from the top or the bottom. You just don't want to change sides because then it will look odd because it won't be the same all the way down. So here's my eight strands. I poke my hook in, grab the strands, pull them all up together through the hole, and pull it up as much as that yarn will allow you. That's going to give you more room to pull the tail through. So I hold on to the very ends of those strands 
and then I kind of hook rug it through. Just like that. And then two inches down, lands in a completely different part. But this is fun. Don't worry too much about it looking perfect just yet. Fringe is supposed to look fun and happy and a little bit messy. And if you don't like them straggly like this, this is from the center of the yarn ball, so it's going to be a little frizzy. I had an extra there, so I just pulled it out. No harm, no foul. But it's going to look a little bit wiggly. If you don't like that, go ahead and just steam that with an iron, get it damp, and it'll come straight all by itself, especially after the first wash. I never worry about it. I think it's kind of cute like this. It looks like more fringe because they're kinked and kind of frizzy. Alrighty, we'll continue on all the way down to the center and all the way up the top. Two inches down, start getting the hang of it. It's a little bit faster after the first couple. <laughs> and I'm just, I don't know if you ever hook rugged when you were little, but I did the rug hooking and that's what this reminds me of. Because you just put it in there, grab your strands, pull up, and pull the tail through the hoop that you made when you pulled up. So make a little hoop, grab the tail with your hook, and pull, oops, and pull it through the hoop that you made. I'm twisting it just a little bit so it comes through as one strand. And as long as you work from the same side and don't like flip the scarf over and start inserting your hook from the other direction, it's going to look nice and uniform. Every about two inches, work your way down to the point, up to the other side, not along the straight edge of the top, and it's going to be beautiful. I cannot wait to see it. All my social media, <laughs> I choked, all my social media links are below. Please come follow me and let me see the shawl if you made one. I would love to see. I have the channel here please like and subscribe i have a podcast i do your reviews i do tutorials like this and if you'd like the pattern or pdf come see me on my blog melodycrochet.com for this one and lots of other free patterns you have a great day and let me show you a couple pictures of the finished shawl and then i'll be on my way take good care and i'll see you next time Bye bye